When we're taught about rivers and streams in our basic biology classes, we're often shown idealized pictures of these water bodies. But the truth is, is that human-made dams are becoming a very large part of riverine ecosystems. There are 2,500 dams in Michigan alone. That translates into one dam for every 10 miles of free-flowing river. And with an average life expectancy of between 40 and 50 years, 96% of those dams will exceed their lifespan by the year 2030. This is the truth about dams. Dams provide many important services to people. Dams can produce electricity, provide irrigation for farms, reduce damaging floods by storing excess rainwater, provide recreational opportunities, provide water for drinking and firefighting, and produce wetlands that can be important for waterfowl management. Recently, scientists have become increasingly aware of the negative impacts of dams, and their appeal to society is rapidly diminishing. As dams age, they become very expensive to maintain. And if they're not kept up, they can deteriorate to the point where they become safety hazards to people downstream. Dam breaches can and do occur, and when they do, they're extremely destructive and expensive. I talked earlier about how dams mitigate floods. Now let's take a closer look at the role of floods in natural river systems. During low flow periods, sediments build up in the river channel and create little sediment islands in the stream. This is called braiding. During periods of high rainfall, floods rush down the river channel and sweep the sediments downstream and onto the riverbank or riparian zone. Nutrient cycling occurs when the nutrient-rich sediments wash up onto the riverbank and fertilize the soils. This promotes plant growth and keeps the riparian zone healthy. Now let's take a look at how dams affect the transportation of these sediments. Over time, sediments build up behind the dam. Without dredging to remove the material, sediment piles behind the dam render it useless and in extreme cases can cause a dam breach. Now let's apply some of these basic dam concepts and see how dams can impact fish. Going back to natural river systems, fish such as salmon and trout make spawning migrations upstream to reproduce. When we put a big concrete wall in the way of the fish, they become cut off from their spawning grounds and are unable to reproduce effectively. Besides being physical barriers, dams also fundamentally change the ecosystems in which they are built. Because water is drawn from the bottom of the reservoir, downstream waters become very cold and clear. Game fish are also often stocked in the upper reservoir section and in the downstream areas. The changed environmental conditions and the new introduced fish species often make conditions inhospitable to fish that were native to the region before the dam was constructed. While well, dams are built in all parts of the world in many different types of rivers, they all share a common fate. The fate of every dam is to fill in with sediment. What it comes down to is economics. Power companies are realizing that the expensive construction and maintenance costs of dams simply outweigh the profits gained in energy production. In the coming years, we'll see dam construction slow while dam removal takes center stage.